in 2003, we were in the middle of making a documentary film. We had taken a Huey helicopter out of a museum, air museum in Fort Worth, Texas, rebuilt it, refurbished it, made it safe for flying. And we were flying it about 10,500 miles across the United States, mostly the Southern states uh, from New Mexico to Florida, up into Tennessee and Kentucky and over to the coast. This was part of a film to honor Vietnam veterans. And the idea was to go across country and land this Huey in towns and villages and small cities across America. And we'd landed parking lots and golf courses and high school football stadiums and uh, farms, backyards, I mean, all kinds of places. And we met the veterans, we told their local stories, they were on local television. We were on CNN, Fox, uh, uh, MSNBC, NBC, ABC, CBS. We were on all the cable shows uh, for months as we traveled across the country. And every time we went into a small town, we were covered by the local media, local, news, local newspapers, uh, local television station, local radio stations. Sometime I and the crew would be doing two or three interviews a day for different you know, aspects of the media. And towards the end of this journey, one of our last stops was at Kenshaw State University in Georgia, where we had uh, the ROTC and the band coming out there and we had the president of the university and we were gonna interview some, some veterans in that community right along the university there. And before we started the day off, we, we were at another airport at sunrise. Rain was coming down pretty heavy and we were loaded up and ready to go. We had our cameras and our crew. And when the pilot, the command pilot, uh, Bruce, uh, got the thing flying uh, or, you know, got the rotor going and everything, he looks down at his panel and there's a flashing red light indicating that the tail rotor, you know, the gearbox is the, they got something wrong. There's a red light flashing. So he stops, he gets out, climbs up there, cuts the safety wire, pulls out the uh, magnetic plug, discovers there's no metal fragments on it or shavings that it appeared to be just a defective fuse, put it back in, asked everybody if they, if they were good with that because he was good with that and he was a, a certified mechanic and, uh, and a pilot as well. And uh, I, I was a crew chief uh, on the same aircraft, so I, I agreed with them. And we took a vote and any one no vote, we wouldn't have flew the aircraft, but we all believed that it was the, uh, it was, it was the, the flashing light was the problem, the indicator. We got in we flew through this rainstorm. We landed in the middle of the rain, the band plays, everybody comes out. We go inside and have a meal with everybody in the cafeteria. We come back out and the sun's shining and uh, we're sitting in the helicopter. We got our cameras rolling. We're interviewing veterans that have interesting stories. And we see this, this woman, Turns out this woman, Donna Rowe, was a retired uh, army nurse. And at one time she was stationed in Saigon in 1969 during the Vietnam War. And she brought this scrapbook along and she opened it up and there was this pictures of her and this baby, this young baby, three weeks old. And she began to tell the story about how these American soldiers from the 1st Infantry Division had saved this baby and how they brought it to the hospital and how it was just a, a great story. So we were definitely gonna film this and it was gonna be part of our documentary. And we all became very interested and the crowd grew to over 50 people around her listening. And it was a newspaper reporter there as well from the Atlantic Constitution that was writing up this story, which later appeared in the press. But she went on to say that in 1969, she. She got this radio call. She was working at the uh, U.S. Army Third uh, Fields Hospital, and uh, it was from the it was guys out from the First Infantry Division. They're in this village, and they discovered this baby, and they wanted to know what to do. Now the story is: these guys walked into this village and found everybody in the village. Everybody in that village had been killed: men, women, children, dogs, oxen everything. There was nothing alive left in the village. And they walk around very cautious because they didn't know if the bodies were booby-trapped, things were going on. And then they hear this whimpering sound, sound like a baby. And they saw this mother with her arms wrapped and she was laying down on top of this, what appeared to be a baby. 
And so they broke every rule. They turned the body over and it could have been a booby trap, but it wasn't. And they saw she was wrapped in the arms. They didn't know what to do. So they called the hospital and normal procedure would be you call the hospital, you got a civilian, you take the civilian to a civilian doctor. In other words, the Vietnamese were not being treated at the army hospital. That was strictly for uh, military wounded and sick. But Donna, for this, some reason on that day, she goes, no, I'm not going to let that happen to this baby. So she said, bring that baby, medevac that baby, get it on a helicopter, leave it in the mother's arms and bring it here to the third field hospital. And that's what they did. So she's out there when it comes in and they got it on a, on a gurney and they're rolling the mother in with the broken, you know, with her arms wrapped around me. And uh, so they decide to, uh, to give this kid a chance, not just at life living, but also about her life growing up and give her some opportunities. So they decided that instead of fixing her and then turning her over to the civilian, you know, to the regular other orphanage, that there was a Catholic orphanage in, in town that this field hospital was supporting with supplies and helping out. And she knew she had some leverage that she'd probably be able to get this child in there as long as that child was a Catholic baby. So she called him and made sure the Catholic chaplain came as fast as he could, whether breaking the mother's arms and, and of course then the pressure drops and they had, they had to operate and all the stuff is going on. And there she is uh, with the chaplain and with, uh, with the medic and, uh, and the doctor and they're all working on this baby. And this chaplain is trying to baptize the baby and sprinkling stuff and doing all that and says, and I now baptize thee and then pauses because they need a name. And they looked at the nurse and the nurse, she's Irish. And she remembers a song about uh, Take Me Home, Kathleen. There's an Irish ballad. And she goes, Kathleen. And then they needed a last name. And so since it was the Third Fields Hospital, they baptized her Kathleen Fields. And, uh, and that's how she became a Catholic that day. And so she got her life saved. And that began her journey into the rest of her life. That story was great. Everybody was happy with it. Boom. And we thought, oh, that's good. That'll be in the movie. We'll do that. The newspaper that was listening did a story on it. And sometime after the story broke and across the country, uh, the studio, Powerhead Studios, they had a phone message, a uh, recording. And in the recording basically says, I believe I'm baby Kathleen that you're looking for, that you, you have in your movie. And boom, all of a sudden, everybody went into action. They found the baby, did a little research, contacted her, and they decided, wow, this is something we really need to do. So they, they, they were already finished filming. They had no budget money left. And they decided, well, let's do one more thing. So they decided to meet at uh, an a airfield or, or in uh, San Antonio, Texas, and had the helicopter come in there. And they, they sent airline tickets out for Kathleen and her mother uh, and uh, uh, her, her husband and children and stuff like that. I guess, yeah, her immediate family. And, and then they found Donna again and it flew da Donna out to be reunited with her. And then they found the, the, the medic that was with her and they brought him in because he was part of the story. And then they found out that the helicopter pilot that actually flew the baby in there was available. He was there. He was so they found him and they, they got some airline tickets. So by the way, they needed like $35,000 to pull this off. And a bunch of angels, people like Southwest Airlines and a bunch of other people uh, all got together and, and just gave the money. They didn't want no publicity over it. They didn't ask for anything. They just did it. And Southwest Airline gave about 17 airline tickets out to make sure everybody that needed to be there could fly in. And they paid for hotel rooms. And it was just, it was really a beautiful thing to see so many people pulling together for this whole story. The story was also covered uh, on CBS Morning News, where they, they did a thing on it and flew them there. But meanwhile, they found this pilot. Before they found the pilot, people say in the town that he was very depressed after the war. He had PTSD. He did a lot of drinking. He was kind of sad. He wasn't happy. Felt like he'd wasted his time in Vietnam and in the military, like for nothing. 
And then when they contacted him and told him the story about baby Kathleen, this baby that he flew in there and saved, they say it changed his whole demur. I mean, all of a sudden he was, he was happy. He was like, had a reason to live. He felt good. He felt like, wow, I, I actually did something. My, my time in Vietnam actually served a purpose. And he was feeling really great. They sent him airline tickets. He was scheduled to be there, scheduled to be interviewed. And a day before he leaves, he caught pneumonia and he died, which was sad, but it was also happy in one way because he really believed that was his time to go. When he went, he actually knew that he actually did some good in Vietnam and it, it changed his whole outlook on life, even if he only had another day or so to go. So it was a bittersweet reunion. It was on the airfield, the helicopter landed, we came out, did a great, wonderful story. And that is not quite the end of the story. Turns out that Kathleen, who actually was adopted by uh, Marvin Cords, that was his name, or Marvin Cords, who actually lives right on the edge of the town I live in, Elk Grove, California. So they were in my neighborhood that whole time as we're going all across the country. And, and she was married and she had three children and a husband. She was 33 years old. And so I found out afterwards that in the excitement of putting all this together, everybody forgot to send an airline ticket and invite the man who adopted her and did all this work, it took him a year to get her there. He got left out of the main story. So I heard about this and I was kind of saddened by that because I was like, this guy got to get a lot of this guy. So I was giving a speech uh, on Memorial Day in the state capital of Sacramento at the Vietnam Veterans Memorial. And it was like several hundred people, mostly Vietnam vets and their family. And they were in attendance on this. And at that time I chose to tell this very story I'm telling you on how this baby got adopted, how it changed her life, and, and how this, this great humanitarian that just lived down the road from Sacramento there by town, that he spent over a year getting paperwork done and getting the president of Vietnam to sign off on it even, to, to, and, and had trouble with the Catholic Church and the orphanage, but got through it all. Not only did he adopt her, but he ended up adopting several other children. So. I wanted him honored. So when I got through telling the story, I had him in the audience. And I told everybody, I said, we got a real treat today. Because in the audience is the man that adopted baby Kathleen. And he stood up and he got three minute plus standing ovation. And he, everybody hugged him and, you know, and the cameras were on him for local television. I mean, he finally got, he finally got recognized. It was a beautiful thing. And then after everybody calmed down on that, and I said, well, I got one more thing. I said, I got baby Kathleen. She wants to talk to you. And I don't want to change the words because I wrote them down and recorded them because I thought they were beautiful. It was a short speech, but she got right to the point. And when she finished, there wasn't a dry eye in the place. She said, hello, my name is Kathleen Cords Epps. And I was just three weeks old. My tiny little life was saved by American GIs, nurses, and doctors who took great risks to save me. I'm tired of hearing the, all the media talk about American baby killers. I was orphaned. I was just a baby in Vietnam. The VC killed my mother and the entire village. And I'm alive and healthy today because of veterans like you. And when you came back, you were never welcomed home as heroes that you were. And I never had the opportunity to say what I wanted to say for many years. Welcome home. Thank you very much. God bless you and your families.